evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani tonight. Budget 2016 faces another hurdle as lawmakers allege padding of the document. Senate defers passage of bill. EFCC closes its case against the National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Olisa Metu. Key witness narrates how Metu destroyed his statement during investigation. Our next chairman pushes for amendment of the Electoral Act and insists the Commission will not discard use of card reader technology. And at least 10 people confirmed dead and over 100 injured following collision of two passenger trains in the German state of Bavaria. And on business news tonight, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation says the country's four refineries will resume production before the end of February. In sports news, in a dramatic twist, Kenya officials deny plans to stop their athletes from participating at the Rio Olympics if the Zika virus reaches epidemic levels. I'm Linda Akibe, and from Abuja, Simon Achuba emerges deputy governor of Kogi State two weeks after the governor was sworn in. We begin tonight with this shocking revelation from the Department of State Security that the command has arrested one Abdus Salam NSC, said to be a recruiter for the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. According to a statement by the DSS, Yunusa was arrested in Kano following intelligence which indicated his move to indoctrinate and recruit youths in the country. Also arrested in Daura, Katana State, are Ibrahim Mohammed Daura. Zahara Din Salisu and five others suspected to be members of the proscribed extremist group Ansaru. The DSS reveals it has busted the network of the syndicated kidnap gangs in Kebi, Zamfara, Niger, Nasarawa, Oyo and Oshun states, as well as the FCT. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army is set to close some markets in Borno and in Yobe states, identified for engaging in illegal trade. Addressing new, a news conference in Abuja, the director, Army Public Relations, uh, Colonel Sani Usman, says the measure is to curtail illicit trading and smuggling in the Northeast. Also speaking in the news conference, the Chief of Civil Military Affairs, Major General Nicholas Rogers, added that the Nigerian army is collaborating with the National Union of Road Transport Workers to ensure thorough search of vehicles and commuters. Moving on now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has closed its case against the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Olisa Metu. This comes after the eighth prosecution witness told the court of how Mr. Metu destroyed his statement during an investigation by the anti Graft Agency. Our correspondent, Amaka Okafo, has the report. <laughs> At the resumed hearing, the prosecutor Silvana Stahir called his eighth witness, one Mr. Junaid Said, an investigative officer with the EFCC. Mr. Said tells the court that after volunteering his statement willingly, the accused, who has read a cautionary note, tore it to shreds. He also tells the court that besides keeping 50 million naira for himself from the 400 million that was allegedly paid to him by the former NSA, Mr. Metu paid about 77.5 million naira to one CMC Connect for campaign publicity for the PDP, while 25 million naira was given to one Abadabu for the same purpose. The witness also tells the court that the national women leader of the PDP, Mrs. Kema Chikwe, got 5 million naira from the set money, while the chairman of board of trustees of the People's Democratic Party, Chief Tony Anneni, received the sum of 21.7 million naira. The witness tells Justice Obang Abang that the sum of 500 million naira was paid in two tranches to accompany Daniel Ford International by Mr. Metu for the purchase of a landed property at Banana Island in Lagos State. It's not the amount or the number of witnesses that matters, but the quality of evidence that is tendered before the court. Having fielded eight solid witnesses, we believe 
were put across the case of the prosecution before the court. That's why we have decided to close our case. On the cross-examination, the witness told the court that the investigations revealed that the former National Security Advisor, Kunal Sambo Dasuki, had on the 27th of November 2014 made a 10 billion naira withdrawal from the central bank and converted same to 47 million dollars which was shared to PDP members at its national convention. According to him, the 2 million US dollars allegedly laundered by the PDP spokesperson is strongly linked to the said withdrawal because it was four days after the disbursement that Mr. Meta gave the money to his then wealth manager. He however tells the court that he had no documentary evidence in relation to the money because it was paid to Metu in cash. We adjourned the matter to the 18th so that we'll explore our options and um, determine which way we'll go. It remains to be seen what the defense, that is, lawyers to Mr. Olisa Metu, the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, have in their arsenal to defend the allegations made by the eight prosecution witnesses. The case has been adjourned to the 19th of February 2016 for the defense to open its case. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. There's been wild drama today as the self-acclaimed leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mr. Namdi Kanu, lost his bid to compel a federal high court to release his travel documents. Mr. Kanu, through his lawyer, Mr. Chris Muma, told the court that the said items do not form part of evidence listed by the prosecution as evidence in the case. Ms. Sekanu arrives in court in a green pickup van belonging to the Nigerian police force. For a few minutes, he refuses to alight from the van unless his handcuffs are removed. His lawyer tries to calm him down. He finally alights from the van and heads into the court. Inside the court, Mr. Kanu refuses to allow the prison officials to take off the handcuffs. Again, his lawyer intervenes. The director of public prosecution informs the court that he has an application seeking to try Mr. Kanu and his co-accused persons in camera. But the said application was not ripe for hearing. As such, it is reserved for another day. They have already been receiving threats on their telephones that uh, they will be attacked if they come to court to give evidence. And uh, because of that reason, we decided that uh, we should ask the court to give them some kind of protection while they testify before the court. Okay, when we come to the court this morning, we are ambushed by the application to conduct the trial of um, in camera, which we intend to react to. So the application is then adjourned to 19th of February for, for hearing, and we intend to respond to that. However, there's another application which is ripe for hearing. Mr. Namdikanu sought the leave of the court to order the release of his travel documents and monies that were collected from him when he was arrested. The prosecution rejects the application, saying it was not filed appropriately. In his ruling, Justice James Soho declines the application, saying the prosecution is at liberty to decide which items in his custody are relevant for trial. Our application for release of those items were predicated on the fact that they were not listed as part of the uh, uh, items they want to tell in court. And uh, I don't know, for the reason personal to the lordship, he very refused it. So we, we have no objection to that and may more likely going to correct it in the, the period of time. The trial judge adjourns the case to the 19th of February 2016 to hear the application filed by the prosecutor seeking to try Mr. Kanu in camera. Staying with legal matters, a trial of the former chairman, House of Representatives ad hoc committee for monitoring of fuel subsidy regime, Honorable Farouk Lawan, has again been stalled. This follows the inability of the prosecution to pay the prescribed fees on a document he seeks to tender before the court. In a short ruling, Justice Angela Ataluka ordered the prosecution to explore the option of making payment to recognized revenue collecting agency of the federal government. She subsequently adjourned the case to March the 7th and 8th for definite trial. Honorable Lawan is standing trial for allegedly receiving $500,000 from Mr. Femi Otedola 
after making an initial demand of $3 million. Meanwhile, the federal high court sitting in Lagos has fixed the arraignment of a distressed bank, Nigeria International Bank Limited, and 16 other accused persons for March 2nd. The accused persons were arraigned before the court by the federal government on a 20-count charge bordering on conspiracy, intent to defraud, falsification of documents, fraudulent alteration and diversion of over 2.6 billion naira. The presiding judge, Justice Ibrahim Buba, had to adjourn after the prosecuting counsel, Mr. Chukudi Chikelu, urged the court to grant the short adjournment to enable the charge be served on all the accused persons. In part two after the break, Kogi State gets deputy governor two weeks after the governor assumed power. Please join us again.